Uh, first of all, I would like to thank the organizers for this very interesting uh, event. And uh, I was asked uh, to be practical and bridge communication and fundraising issues in my presentation. So I will try to do that and live up to all your expectations. So two disclaimers at the beginning. One is um, and that communication, at least in our watchdog, is not only about campaigning. We communicate through our video uh, advocacy tools also about issues that are usually not presented in the media, so we use that as well. And we also use the more traditional ways, press releases and stuff, which are not necessarily uh, campaigning in the sense that was presented by Mache. Um And uh, the second disclaimer is that uh, by fundraising, we not only mean addressing private donors, so at the end, I will show you some uh, numbers. So don't be afraid that it's that so low percentage of our budget is coming from uh, from uh, fundraising because by fundraising we also mean uh, uh, addressing donors. So what is uh, the Hungarian Civil Liberties Union that I represent? It's a watchdog NGO established uh, 20 years ago in uh, Hungary. Uh, it does all the usual stuff that you are all familiar with. Uh, pushing for law reform, legal, providing legal aid, doing strategic litigation, and also public education campaigns. And as, uh, as it was mentioned, we are working on a quite difficult field because on the one hand we are protecting the rights of the Roma, and on the other hand we are speaking up against illegal or undemocratic ban on an anti-Semitic uh, demonstration. I won't tell you all the activities that we are involved in, but these two examples I think represent it really well. And I think what is unique about the ACLU is our excellence in communication. We have four people in the team out of 30 that is working on communication, three of them working in the video advocacy program, two full-time employees, and one part-time staff member who is a cameraman. And we also have a communication officer and uh, all four of them and also some of the staff members uh, are um, experienced with interviewing and editing uh, videos and I think the cooperation is uh, very important for our work both within the organization so uh, the teams are not working separately and the communication team, the video advocacy program and the program directors that are responsible for the substantial uh, more lawyerly uh, part of the work, they are always cooperating and they are coming up with ideas uh, together. And uh, cooperation is also important in the sense that outside of the NGO we are trying to cooperate with partners, other NGOs and also news portals that are sympathetic to our issues. <coughs> um, I will uh, address basically three types of campaigning slash, slash fundraising um, uh, types. One is when we have, when we produce the video advocacy tool for something paired with other activities, and how does that connect to fundraising? And then uh, strictly, and then videos and other activities that focus only on fundraising strictly. And then I will give you one example about fundraising, uh, crowdfunding uh, attempt that we had and some worst practices if I have time. I think I have 15 minutes in total. So I uh, might not show as many videos as I uh, wanted to. But uh, this, uh, I picked this example because I think it's uh, probably close to the heart of many of you because it's about transparency. So the government uh, uh, wanted to um, uh, build a GP uh, uh, motto field, you know, this uh, uh, motor uh, contest. Uh, but uh, it seemed that there's huge corruption issues are involved and even uh, the experts of the M uh, Ministry for Finance were against uh, the, the government support, uh, to put it simply, uh, to this, uh, to this uh, investment. So we created a video and that's our, uh, that was back then our Ministry of Finance and I'm sure you are familiar with this yeah. uh, this is from one of those TV shows. And then uh, if you, you could say that, uh, so the question was, uh, are you interested 
uh, why the experts of the Ministry of Finance were against this investment. And then they said, yes, I'm very interested to know. And then it took you to a, a, a site where you could send a letter and we also uh, cooperated with other NGOs including Key Monitor who is sitting there uh, and we also filed many freedom of information requests. So this was part of one campaign uh, and actually it was a successful one um, and in the sense it was not as planned as much as was explaining because it happened and escalated really quickly. So I mean we could have failed also uh, so this is one lesson that I think you really require luck as well. <coughs> Another uh, different type of um, uh, cooperation, um, we learned that one of the localities want to uh, ban or stop people with disabilities moving to their uh, city. So uh, my colleagues went um, to the meeting of the, of the local government and this is a video produced from that government which was really funny and people said uh, the representative is very funny thing, and here the, the mayor says, frankly, I don't know how uh, it will end. And we also paired with one of the news portals in Hungary and another local uh, NGO, and we uh, put all of our, um, there was an open letter, there was this article, and there was the video, and everything went out on Friday, and by Sunday, uh, the politician, one of the politicians produced his own video and actually uh, this, uh, this ban on uh, people moving into the locality was overturned and actually another locality in the, in the neighborhood also uh, allows people with disabilities moving in. Why is it interesting from a fundraising point of view? Uh, so, yeah, first maybe a few sentences about how campaigning, communication, and uh, connected fundraising is only the tip of the iceberg of our work. I think it's in two ways. It's only the tip of the iceberg. One is that all this big thing underneath is our <coughs> substantial professional legal work that we are doing. And without that, that up there is worth nothing. You won't be able to sink the government ship without this underneath. And uh, also, it's a tip of the iceberg also uh, in the sense of proportionality. So I will give you some pointers at the end, but uh, as a teaser to that, uh, I think you really, be, you really need to be careful when you are using it, because if you are overusing it, then you will be like that girl in the forest who shouted, wolf, 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 when no, there was no wolf, and when the real wolf came, uh, no one was listening anymore. So. Uh, um, yeah, so how does uh, these advocacy videos connect to fundraising? So at the end of our videos, we say how you can get more information about the topic, but we also say that uh, the ACLU doesn't expect any government or state funding, but we are happy to accept your <coughs> donation or your support. And then it uh, shows uh, <coughs> the website where you, uh, or the part of the website where you should uh, go if you want to uh, donate or support us. That's Hungarian, that's the English, you can see the English version is a bit less developed. We have, uh, uh, and the bottom is in uh, red, while the rest of the text is in, uh, uh, in orange. So I think what I have learned from you <laughs> that it should be more striking out. <laughs> um, so there, I will. So put this. Do you have many? Uh, what is? Are you able to say who uses uses the English site and whether people support whether people from? Uh, actually, from uh, I just went through. So there are uh, there are donations that I am not able to tell whether they are coming from Hungary or from abroad. But sometimes from the numbers, I'm suspected suspected that it was uh, in made in euros. So they're very small percentage. Very small. So but I think those people are Hungarians who are living abroad. Yes. Um, let me see if I forgot something. No. Okay. So and so these were about those uh, video advocacy campaigns that are just connected to fundraising, but not strictly about fundraising. And then uh, we have the 1% campaign. What is the 1% campaign? And I'm sure, sure Poland and Romania knows what it is. 1% uh, of your annual income tax 
you can uh, donate it to whatever uh, organization that you want to. And we always campaign to get as much of the, these 1% as we can. So we use Facebook, uh, our social media platform. Facebook is the most popular in Hungary. Twitter is not really out there. We have 16,000 followers uh, on one of our uh, Facebook profile and 18,000 on another one. So with that, we can reach more than 30,000 people because there's a very small overlap between the two. We do offline and online um, campaigns as well. The offline could be the stickers uh, that we once produced. Uh, it's really hard to say how, su uh, how successful this campaign was, but I, whenever I go around in Budapest, I see uh, these stickers put on the walls. And, uh, but we are not able to detect how many people uh, were um, reached by this. And then uh, online uh, campaign, uh, we produce videos. Uh, we try different kinds. Uh, once we made a viral video that was meant to be go viral on the on the internet, and indeed it reached uh, 40,000 views. And it was about it took one of our Sunday mornings. Uh, a professional team recorded us, and it was about the drug war. How every fourth person or every fourth uh, teenager has already tried some sort of drugs in Hungary and uh, how they are threatened with, uh, uh, with criminal proceedings against them. And then we uh, once uh, um, made a graffiti campaign and it was a graffiti, an inverse graffiti, so we were not polluting or not dam uh, damaging anything but cleaning. And we made a video about that. I won't show you uh, it now. I won't uh, show it now, but uh, I think no, I won't. Uh, but I think if you can circulate my presentation, you see there's a hyperlink, so you can watch it. But the the third one I want to show, uh, <coughs> uh, if I can, yes. And now we have one Sorry, there's supposed to be in its subtitles, so it's about the ACLU and they are explaining what we are doing. This is about patient rights. Um, and then this is about transparency, how a politician is giving a speech, and then we reveal what is in the background. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, there's no uh, subtitle, so I will stop it. But this is something in the It's here, it's here. It's here. Okay, okay. It's full screen. Just see, I, I told you that the subtitles are not needed. Then what? What was that? So we are Szerintem nem oké, hogy az állam ötször mit költ a drogfogyasztó üldözésére, mint megerőzésre, ártalom csökkentésre, kezelésre és gyógyításra egyébként. Úgy gondoljuk, hogy a súlyos drogbetegeket sem kell börtönnel vinnek, hanem gyógyító szakségítséget kell mondani. Okay. Uh -huh. And that's the limit of the connection. <laughs> <laughs> the rest you can see on your own. Yeah, so these are the videos that are made only for fundraising uh, purposes. Okay, let's go back where we were. And then we also have other offline uh, um, parts of the campaign as well. These are the events. Usually we have uh, two big parties a year, one just right before people have to decide about the 1% who they give it to, and one on the Human Rights Day on December 10th. And the events are great because they are very personal. They give you an opportunity to meet the people who are representing you, who are fighting for your rights. And actually we, we hear feedback that it's really great. And usually we also uh, have some concerts, so um, so it's usually a good party and you can ask those Hungarians if they agree with me or not. But in, and in this way you can also give back to the people because they are there, you are approachable, they can talk to you. Plus we also collect donations, of course. Uh, due to legal constraints we are not able to take uh, entrance fees but we are collecting donations and if you are donating about a certain, um, certain amount, which is usually around 10 euros, then you receive a t-shirt or another uh, gift. 
and we are also collecting um, contacts. As we are a privacy concern, a data protection concern, and we are not doing spamming or direct marketing, as you wish to call it, uh, but we are collecting contacts on this event, and then we can use those for um, fundraising purposes. Yeah, and this is this uh, slide shows uh, the the growth in our um, income from one percent, and you can clearly see that uh, in 2008 we really started to take seriously the campaigning, and uh, it went high up, and it, now it's more uh, uh, flat. Uh, but it's due to, on the one hand, uh, some tough rules changing and also due to the fact that more and more NGOs are competing for those 1% uh, and uh, therefore we, we lost some of our... When did you get your strategy? Uh, well, it's always on the construction and that will be another <laughs> pointer. <laughs> what are you doing? So how much is it in the euros? The 8 billion? Um, Oh, help me please. <laughs> it's about... Uh, There's a bit less than uh, 30,000. Yeah. Euros. Euros, yeah. 30,000. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and what, uh, what do you, did you start doing? The viral video or you... Uh, the first one... Uh, the first one was the viral video. Yeah, that was the first one. But uh, you have to see that this is the time also when social media really came into Hungary. So you could re reach people in a very effective and cheap way. Uh, because we are obviously not able to <laughs> buy billboards or advertising spaces in newspapers, but we can use our, um, our social media uh, platforms. And you can also use the promote button. So for very little money, you can actually reach more people. And then, uh, last but not least, we also tried one crowdfunding. Um, website, the Global Giving, where you can have a project and if you uh, donate, if you reach a donation of a certain amount, then, then you win, um, then you will be eligible to, uh, to submit other projects as well. Um, and then, of course, we did a video for this, uh, <laughs> it's about debunking the war on drugs, and then we showed how costly, in many senses, the war on drugs are, is, and what we are doing against it. And here you can see that uh, people can uh, donate <coughs> one time only and it gives different, and if there is more uh, options. So for 15 bucks for an alkaline batteries, for 50 bucks for subtitling an ACLU video into several languages. And then you can uh, give monthly uh, reoccurring um, uh, donations and you can give uh, donations in kind as well. And this was quite successful. But what we had to do, we had to convince our partners from different organizations to donate it. So it was not just like that, that you put it out there and then people donate. I think uh, the, the, um, the amount that you had to reach, it was uh, around $6,000. And we had to uh, convince some of our partners to donate it 1000 bucks just for this cause. So you really need to do some direct outreach uh, when you start crowdfunding or at least uh, at this platform that we have experience with. And then, um, do I have more time? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, it's a very bad example, Anna. Okay. Do you agree? I agree. Okay. So, uh, what did not work out or what we could have done better? Uh, one was uh, about fake parking penalties. Uh, there was a Supreme Court decision that uh, one parking company that runs the parking system should, uh, should um, uh, publish uh, its uh, income and other data. So we thought that, oh wow, this is something great. People care about uh, parking penalties and parking fees, and then we can do some cool offline campaigns. So we fake these parking penalties that are put on your on your uh, shield when uh, when you when you are fine, uh, and then we put our um, uh, material about the ACLU in it and also a check. It didn't work. We didn't receive. <laughs> uh, maybe we received one check, so it wasn't successful. I th we think that people probably got afraid or peace and then they opened it and it wasn't that, and then they were like, these guys. Uh, and then someone yesterday mentioned. Um, 
uh, joining a marathon and making a fundraising out of a marathon. There's a critical mass in Hungary, and maybe you are familiar with the concept. A lot of bikers take over the city to demonstrate for more bike, uh, bike paths. Um, we tried to join this, but they were really strictly against uh, uh, any kind of NGO joining the parade. So we didn't succeed in that. Maybe we could have done a different type of approach, not really trying to cooperate with them, but organize our own group to go to, together to the critical mass. And this is something also that I just learned that maybe we could have thought about that. And then uh, what you can't, can't read, it says, cool video, no follow up. So this, this doesn't have English subtitles, so I won't show it to you, but um, um, I'm sure you also know that uh, homelessness is criminalized in Hungary now, and one uh, ad agency uh, created for us uh, a very short clip that says that um, in uh, all the fancy hotels, uh, two nights uh, are, uh, let's say, um, I don't know, 50 euros or less. And then if you spend two nights on a, on a bench like this, then you are supposed to pay 75 euros. I'm just making up these. Yeah. And it's really cool, it went viral, everyone loved it, but we didn't really connect any follow-up to it. So no letter sending campaigns, we were already fed up uh, with those. Uh, no collecting signatures and not much fundraising. Uh, we just, just simply didn't think about it because we were so consumed in the issue uh, that we wanted to uh, stop. So few numbers, as you can see, six to ten percent of our yearly budget comes from private donors. These are mainly individuals, and most of the money comes from the one percent campaign. And it might, may, might seem low, but as I said, we are not very popular. We are not uh, protecting <coughs> pandas or forests. Or so, uh, but that is still worth one month of operation. And as I said, we could uh, we could fine tune our strategy, and we currently doing that. And that's one of my takeaways for you: that write a strategy, have it, but constantly try to rethink it and rewrite it. And uh, this is a uh, uh, um, data from this year by June. So by the first half of the of the of the year, 152 people donated to the ACIU at least four euros, and you could really see the peak uh, thanks to that gift four euros to the ACIU campaign. <coughs> yeah, and um, there are few few pointers, and I put her here because she's our fundraiser um, and grants manager. She's she's great. Uh, some of you have met her. So one of the first pointer that I have for you is use your available sources. Most of the things that you have seen here uh, were created either from the resources that we already have, or for example that ad. It was made for free by a creative ad agency. They liked us because uh, of what we are doing. They were really outraged about this issue, the criminalizing homelessness, and then they said, here you are, you do whatever you want with it. But I say at first, because I think first you can really show um, um, some of the power of this, both with the advocacy campaigning and on uh, the power of fundraising. And then I can see, I, can, I think that uh, you can ask uh, money from the foundations, because uh, I think most of you are grappling with this uh, uh, problem that you try to diversify your portfolio, that you try to multiply the sources that you get your money from. And this is a good way to partially, and I say this with caution, uh, to challenge that and to overcome that. And I think donors are also uh, interested in, in financing these. And maybe you could uh, approach it from uh, developing a video advocacy program or some video advocacy and then you can try to see how it, uh, how it uh, can, uh, have, can serve some fundraising purposes as well. But do not expect a miracle. You're not going to be popular if you're a watchdog. You can't uh, base all your um, activities on campaigning or fundraising campaigning and I say you should not as well. Uh, and don't expect the miracle in the sense that don't expect that it will, in like one year, it will give half of your budget and then you are just fine. 
you will really have to work hard on this and think about this. And so have a strategy, but rewrite it constantly. Evaluate what you reached, what failed. Don't be afraid of it, but, uh, but think about this. And it's really important to give back and report about your success. And we really learned it the hard way. We lost some of our big donors because we didn't take care of them enough. So it's really important to follow up with them and you can read all the fundraising data and fundraising uh, principles in what, uh, like, so how, how regularly you have to communicate with them to keep them, how regularly you have to give them something to do, uh, and report about your success. And that's uh, what we also did in some of our campaigns, just simply reported, look what we are doing. We are really worth of your money. But be wise. And uh, your most important asset, I think it's credibility. And don't uh, lose it just because you can gain some. And I want to show you a video about one of my takeaways. Uh, and I hope I can do it. It's about um, being personal. I think it's very important to give faces to the organization. You're not only an institution, but there are people this one? Uh, yeah, this one. that care. And that we just, you know, just a rush of idea came. Sorry, not now? Uh, I didn't. Yeah. Can you? Yes. <laughs> so it, it's a. Uh, we wish Merry Christmas to many people, you will see. And again, no subtitles. To our donors, partners, colleagues, volunteers, relatives, clients, and then a, a new year in rich in human rights, lack of uh, torture. Lack of far right uh, with a uh, loud media. Yeah. So th this is a very. So it's a Christmas card. Yeah, this is a Christmas card, and this was really easy, and because we had the video advocacy. Program. Was there any response to that? Uh, yeah, people loved it. I mean, it reached really a lot of uh, shares. And this is not, you know, this was not connected to any fundraising campaign, but I think it's very important because you can see the people, you could see me in it and other colleagues. And, you know, most of the times you are only in email contact or the at best. Uh, telephone contact with the people that you, you are working with. And this really, Give them something. Some yeah, and some relations. So yeah, so thank you. Here you can support us. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> and um, there is my email address, and I'm happy to answer the questions.